Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm making this video. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to post it. I just want to make a sort of per personal note on something I want to either record about or talk about uh, later on. It's about the killing of Elijah McLean. Um, it is perhaps to me uh, the most egregiously unjust and heartbreaking of all the recent cases. Um, perhaps even including, I forget her name, the girl that was babysitting, the lady that was babysitting and they, the police officer just shot her through the window. Um, because of how this, this guy uh, appeared to be as a person, when you see how he how he was with his friends, um, you really you really see a contrast. You really start seeing uh, the deeper aspect of the problem that we're having in the country. And it actually doesn't surprise me that mm, news networks are a little shy. You would think that it's so uh, egregious that it would have splashed onto the news like uh, the story that followed George Floyd, which I also forget his name right now. Um, it is starting to, but I think it's just, it hits too hard. The, the, uh, it's, it's just incredulous. This, this was a kid, a massage therapist. I mean, he was one of the guys that we all knew could not hurt a fly that was uh, you or, or my friend, yours or my friend, um, you know, I, when I think and analyze about these cases, I go directly to a place, a very humanist analysis kind of a situation, because I really feel that these big social country scale situations find their explanation at a source that from which everything gets, uh, from which everything repercussions in a, in a sort of a construction of, of uh, manners of doing things and beliefs that are upheld by the citizens and by people and it all kind of gets uh, built on basic ideas, some of which we argue about, like constitutional right to bear arms and some we completely overlook, but the point is that they, um, they're not taken for... It's, it's almost like saying, if you have a certain type of soil, this kind of weed will grow, but we're not talking about the kind of soil that we have. We continue to talk about uh, this weed and how to combat it, or what pesticides to use, or how to yank it out and eradicate it from the soil, or or what it does and what it doesn't do, is it good, is it bad, and it's clear uh, that we don't want this weed growing in our field. And the most, the, the biggest, the broadest, and most determining, fundamental, essential reason is that the soil has a certain characteristics, a certain characteristic which allows for this weed more than any other weed to grow. And so it would be very simple to just find a general consensus, and then go for the main problem, main reason of the problem. When it comes to the shootings uh, that have been happening, of course, the notion of our culture's, some call it love fascination, love affair, which I think is a euphemism, it's terrible, it's a way of saying something that kills your children can be subject to a love affair, a, a passion. Um, guns are never by nature a good thing and this is where America is having problems. Guns have been a necessary thing to defend yourself to uh, be, be, uh, before violent um, a violent attack or to survive, to hunt and, and feed yourself. This is really the, what sparked the, 
establishing the idea that they are necessary because otherwise there's no other way or no better way to satisfy that need. And of course then it, it goes into culture and we have all sorts of derivations, collectors, people who collect ancient weapons and um, hunting for sport, totally cool, mean thing, you know, that people do is as if, you know, you see the beauty of an animal and it's all its colors and its patterns and and its delicate uh, social interaction with its own species and somebody just brutally walks up to it and shoots it and then goes, oh, look what I can do with this, you know, uh, you know, they're ex totally ignorant exponents of this original invention. Uh, to look, to understand better where the root uh, and in this, in the context of this kind of explanation, a problem uh, resides when it comes to police brutality and the case of Elijah. Oh, Jesus, my memory! I forgot his last name already. Uh, I still have the the news on here. You know who I'm talking about, but of course, it doesn't say. Okay. Um, I want you to picture. I want you to picture the, the notion. Just, just let's leave the argument, and I'm going to make my point this through this metaphor. Of uh, a metaphor that has to do with human nature and why we end up doing the things and behaving the way we end up behaving. Um, let's say that there's a room a large room with um, 50 people and everybody's just socially pretty much congenially doing things either sharing food or, or talking, creating groups and this could be analogous to a society, to a country in its neutral, sort of uh, peaceful, natural, normal state um, and then there's an argument an argument starts happening because somebody brought something and they wanted to give it only to certain people or share it with certain people that they had in mind and then somebody else says no we wanted to you should be sharing it with us and it should belong to everybody and so a typical kind of possess argument based on possession and uh, right to do willfully do what we want to do with our own uh, possessions and giving and interaction, you know, confrontation of the wills or a, a belief that your idea is better and that fulfills the democracy of the room and therefore you should be sharing it. And so there's this confrontation of ideology and will and a personal belief in one's own right and it becomes a heated argument. Um, and you see at the distance at the far distances of the room, other people in the room look up, you know, and start looking towards that place. And they start talking amongst themselves. And they say, what's going on there? You know, what are they all? Oh, they're arguing about this or that, you know. And some people start coming in close and, and, and they feel they have a better understanding of what the, the gist of the problem or the, the nut of the problem is. And so they get close to the the main people who are arguing, the two or three or four people who are arguing, they get close and they try to interject and to try to deliver that better perspective they have on the argument they believe they understood. And, and the whole room is a team, a team, do you say, um, is buzzing with, um, with involvement. Uh, and everybody's brain is involved in thinking and, and revisiting what they know about that argument. They're going, oh well, I studied in school once, uh, you know, basic principles of inter interaction and possession and and the right for to one's own willful determinations and so they come and they bring their education towards that focal point and you know, and there's a huge argument and we've seen this in the world, you know, where all of a sudden people, there's like a mass of people all arguing and, and the ones that um, we naturally tend to feel more passionate when we believe, and sometimes that belief agrees with truth, that we have a better perspective or understanding, and so we insist 
stronger uh, to, in, in going to that focal point. And so we see these situations in the world has ha have always uh, happened very naturally. And it seems to be the natural way that human beings um, uh, untrouble or unblock or unknot or uh, work through uh, conflict and chaos of, 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 of the thinking nature, of course. And, um, and then all of a sudden, somebody, not necessarily even maybe any of the two, pe two three or four or ten people who are in the focal point arguing, with most concern or at most at stake in the argument necessarily or although it could be but let's just say that somebody in the periphery of the argument who's close enough to get the attention of all the people in the focal point takes out a gun and shoots it up in the air and says to get everybody's attention or or doesn't shoot it and, and just somebody says he's got a gun he's got a gun uh, and says you know whatever they believe needs to be done. It doesn't matter whether they that person with the gun believes that they know the truth or they, they have the solution or that they feel they have to silence everybody so that everybody stops arguing. Notice the behavior in the room. Notice what happens at that moment. Everybody before the, the harsh violence of the object alone uh, withdraws, goes into themselves, walks away from that area, or some men maybe are a little interested in in the in the in, in, in that um, concentrated in, in, increase um, flare up of a situation. But in general, you could say that people just turn away. They want to get away from there. There's danger. There's somebody that has too much power in their hands. There's all sorts of ideas start, or intuitive belief, uh, intuitive feelings start uh, spreading through the room. And before you know it, there is the focus is around the person with the the arm, the weapon, the gun. Um, even though now there's the argument and the focal point, which has become depopulated. Um, and then there is the focal point of the person with the weapon, and all in all, the room has really stopped thinking about uh, the reason, understanding, trying to analyze and improve the understanding and trying to resolve the situation. And basically, uh, for lack of a better word, you could say that the intelligence that was surrounding that argument has started dumbing, has started becoming muted, has started becoming uninvolved. Um, and then I think of Elijah Cummings. I, I say Cummings because I think that's a, a, a popular last name, but I think I'm getting it mixed up. No, McLean, McLean. Um, I think of Elijah McLean and the, um, the absurdity of him dying because of a injection and perhaps, and, and it's just a brutality because it's not just a the injection. The ignorance, the brutality, it all actually speaks about, uh, and the injection, the, the, the police administrating medicine, what, what's happening here? All of it, that idea of, 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 of police even being a segue to another a fireman coming, rushing in and administrating medicine, and the violence and the guns, all of that, um, is so removed from simply looking at this person and being able to say to one another, no, this, is, this guy is no danger. He was just walking here and we overreacted and we don't need all these people. We don't need 10 police cars <laughs> making fun of other cases. Uh, Vanessa Marquez. Uh, to address this situation and they ended up killing him. So, what are what are we seeing? What are we? What we're seeing is the effect, the power, the influence, the suggestive capacity to influence how we feel and think of guns, of the weapon, and 
how tragic it is that in America it's obvious. I mean, think of about Amer think about how much the, the world has never uh, been so war like work constructed uh, industries economies around uh, resources that are backed by war and war that has no longer anything to do with uh, pretty soon with ideologies even uh, without actually without uh, having anything to do with ideology or de defense of one's sovereignty wars that have to do with uh, we don't want that political mind to take hold in that country or we don't want people to no longer which in reality masks we don't want that country to no longer have open doors for us and, and we want we don't want to no longer have uh, un unconditional dis uh, an unconditional disposition towards our country we don't we don't say it that way but we don't want to lose the relationship that we had before because that new government has a different uh, mentality about sovereignty about developing their selves first uh, differently and and making much less uh, prioritize the relationship with uh, America England France uh, uh, the powers or even China the economic powers of the world um, and so we don't like that especially in the states I mean England is famous for you know busting militarily uh, other countries because they wanted them to open their markets to the world and we still do it and just do it differently not so not so obvious um, which is a complete irony in any case um, irony about you know, freedom democracy you know it seems that uh, the countries that are purporting democracy and freedom uh, self-determination are purporting that within themselves for their own countries but not when it comes to the existence of other countries right one of these great ironies that don't get talked about like like just like we don't talk about um, we don't talk about what is really sociologically in a psychological capacity uh, happening uh, in our culture and, and the changes that our beliefs in a right to to possess, to use, to have guns, you know, the way we think about guns, is actually causing. Uh, it's making us dumber. It's making us uh, less involved and less aware of our own co-nationals, our own people, the people in our own country. We're not we don't know them anymore. Well, well uh, I guess I'm talking about the police, uh, because people who who never had a gun in their hand are perfectly fine with other people who never had a gun in their hand. Uh, but what you seem to notice is that people who really believe in hunting and having uh, guns in their in their household, or the police, or soldiers they all seem to not really care what is happening in the minds of other people uh, obviously because it, nobody likes to act like they're ignorant or they're uncaring for others so they they we always build um, a, a logic a reasoning law ideological logic of philosophy of life to sustain to make it seem like there's nothing wrong with us, there's nothing all that different to us, although you can clearly see that people that have never held guns, are not interested in guns, do not want to hunt animals, are really involved, um, are really involved uh, sociologically in, 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 in issues and activism that has to do with uh, transforming the ar archaic ways in which the world doesn't seem to know how to change, like we still throw people in dungeons basically we don't try to analyze our society and see what why our children are growing up with a need to uh, satisfy their problems with drugs and they become dealers or they become gang members because they didn't have parents I mean a father or all these things we do talk about it we do know that but it's not arriving at where those who would have the responsibility to heal and 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 save and fix the problems that our society are functioning, are working, are entrusted to do. 
uh, through their job. What we know about what happens in society, that intelligence, and like I'm saying, uh, usually bared by those who don't bear arms, <laughs> who don't think of having more power over others, um, are discussing and talking. It doesn't make it to government. And wouldn't you know that in our government, most most people in government do believe in, in the right to bear arms because it's been ingrained. We think it's... I don't want to get into the, the Second Amendment right now, but... Um, uh, because I just want to make this short, but you know, I think it really behooves us to seriously refocus on why the Founding Fathers felt it was important. We say a lot of things. We say things that are that sound good now, as far as why it is important. You know, so that we are free and that no government can ever. I mean, look at what's happening in Seattle. <laughs> we have the right to bear arms, and a group of people wanted to have their own space and wanted to create their own municipality and wanted to have their own idea of social civil living. And we just sneakingly, our government authority sneakingly first talks to their, you know, they don't want to make it apparent that they're oppressive, but sure enough, in a matter of time, there is the line of police bullying down the street, pushing everybody. And so what do we want the Second Amendment for? It's really a farce. It's a false, a falsehood. Um, we already have that government. It's not a foreign government. It's within our own country that is basically using weapons to make sure you don't use your weapons or don't feel because another power and this has to do with uh, also international relationships and Seattle as well a big factor that we also don't talk about is in, in being well armed uh, is that there is a a courage, a bravado that it supports from behind. So the person that is well armed, like the person that has 10 times more nuclear weapons than the next country does, you know, feels, well, you know, we can insist and, and act all tough. If you don't do this, we're drawing the line. We're going to not sell you this. That's how it starts, right? First, it's like, we're, we're going to be real tough. And this whole posturing is facilitated by the notion that in the long run, if necessary, they can't beat our nuclear weapons. And so countries like Britain and France and America and Canada, because all of the English-speaking countries are all kind of cahoots uh, about this, uh, knowing the United States we're representing with its nuclear muscle, will, you know, they've all adopted the same, they've decided to uh, 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 join the allegiance of this of a political philosophy political uh, economic format and um, and so they're basically all these countries are basically bullying their way through un undemocratically uh, through over you know Iran wants to solve their problems by having a totalitarian religious state let them I mean, if the problem is that they are interfering with our own country, well, yeah, we have to defend ourselves. But how many of the countries the United States and, and NATO are fighting against are actually not attacking any of, of the NATO countries? They're messing with situations that NATO wants to keep established the way they are, which is a completely different reason. So. In Seattle, we have the same situation. Um, the government doesn't have to act like it's a dictate, an autocracy or a dictatorship, because it can always gradually just have that extra bit of confidence to say, uh, you know, we're 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 going to be tough about this. And so, at by the same token, on the other side of the line. In Latin America, for example, on the other side of the line, where they are basically disarmed compared to NATO, uh, they on the surface they everybody may be acting according to diplomatic protocol of engagement and meetings of G20 and what have you, but in reality, uh, you know, they don't insist, just like 
maybe the people or the mainly the authorities, more importantly the authorities of Seattle, that first were sort of on the side of the people, they're not insisting against the federal government because they don't have the power, the military, the backing uh, that the federal authorities do. So they're less inclined to say, we don't care about you drawing the line there, we're going to stay firm to this idea, this notion, this, this, this point that we're making, and, and this, uh, this line that we drew. We tend to back, back, uh, back away from that initial line that we had in a moment of, of clarity, of passion, of sovereign, sovereign desire and sovereign intelligence. It, we, we, we back from it, and then the country that has the nuclear weapons, or, or sometimes even economic power is used the same way, like in Latin America and other places of the world, Africa. It gets complicated there because then there's a play with the people who have power within those countries and they want to benefit and, 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 and uh, abuse or rape <laughs> their own countries. Um, so they let other bigger countries rape their country uh, so that they can be rich. It's a little complicated, but the same human more complicated, but the same human dynamics are at play. Uh, power intimidates the use of power by another. And so when I think of Elijah Mc McLean, Jesus, I can't believe I forgot his name again. Mc McLean, yeah. Um, it, it breaks my heart to, uh, to see a sweet guy. I, can, I, I knew him practically. I knew the guy. I would have never asked him for a massage. You know what I mean? Because I know uh, he's too sweet. I would want uh, a, a strong, burly guy. You know that can really give you a good massage. But he's. I. I feel. I. I. Uh, you know. It's. It really teaches me uh, about what is really happening to us, to our country, to our society as a whole, because of the effect believing that guns are a benevolent right because basically that's what it comes down to uh, we know that guns are dangerous we know that it's a, contro a controversy but we don't really base our understanding of weapons and guns where it is which is a killer of life and so the first notion that defines most truly a weapon, a gun, a bomb, is a killer of life, because that's what they're made for, is to kill living things. Um, but well, I don't want to go into another area. We don't seem, we're very weak. Um, some countries understand this, and generally, culturally, are much more involved around this first notion of the weapon and the gun. In America, we seem to believe that it's some kind of victory flag, you know. Uh, most of us actually don't, and most of us are closer to the the sensible truth, this first truth of definition. But we have, I don't want to say indoctrinated, but we have been so culturally educated through generations to see it as something that is about freedom and, and so our understanding of gun differs a great deal in our country to the rest of the world. Uh, even though the other parts in the world use it and government abuses uh, weapons against their own people, uh, we are no exception. We just do things very differently. We are very uh, careful and subtle, and, but you know, we're still the same human being, and we still end up in the long run, perhaps through all around, we take a, sh a longer route, but we end up oppressing, suppressing our people, just as every other dictatorship or tyrannical government has immediately in a direct sense. We just don't seem to, we're the same government every other country has that doesn't puts its own people, its own people in government, and it's the survival of their own governmental institutions above the truth and the well-being that has to do with the citizenship, with the people. Okay.
I, um, I don't want to sound callous. I, I, uh, I want to can't be empathetic uh, in, a, in, a, in a sincere sense with Elijah because I do know that know him. I'm not even living in the States right now. Uh, but I feel I knew how this guy was and um, I'm almost a little too involved passionately in the political sociological argument to uh, give my respects and to say how sorry I am to the family of this boy. Uh, but of course that goes without saying.